Hey, mate. Kia ora. Hey, do you ever get um, mistaken for me? <laughs> because I did a whole concert in Whakatane and this woman insisted that I was you. <laughs> I do. <laughs> or any commemoration. <laughs> or any more. Musician, producer and warrior for Te Reo, I first met Henewehi Mohi when I was 15. We've been mates ever since. We've had a bit of a crisscross, you and me, all our life, nice convent girls. <laughs> Gosh, St. Joe's was very influential for me. How, how was it for you? It was ex exactly the same. I really adored the singing, the connection with the girls and how Miss Kingy got us into line. I love that discipline. I really enjoyed the strictness of the concert party, the kapahaka, and all that involved, as well as the beautiful singing in chapel. And it was kind of like a bubble of Māori girls, Māori young women. Little feminists. <laughs> Led by the nuns. <laughs> Did you ever sneak out? No. Me neither, it was pretty good. <laughs> St. Joe's is famous for its sweet singing, thanks to Dame Georgina Kingi. The college can also claim Firimako Black and Maisie Rika. After we left, Hinuahi and I both went on to Waikato University, where we met icons of the Māori language movement. Suti Muti Kāretu was a tutor, as well as the late Dr. Hinuahi Melbourne and Farehuia. So I really had all that wonderful expertise and lusciousness with the real and, um, and I real love to perform and express myself. While we were working together at Aotearoa Radio, the stage started to beckon. I think you were a more hunter for five minutes. <laughs> but I remember you saying, I don't think I want to dance anymore. <laughs> I wasn't a good dancer. Oh my God, we were the whole glittery hair thing, eh? I know. But our mentor, Dalvanius. That's he was important, wasn't he? He was. Gosh, he was a game changer. He was. Ahead of his time. Just imagine, 1984, when we weren't even really thinking about techno music and, and kapahaka performance and a combination of Moi Pei Whairangi's beautiful lyric. And he was such a visionary and he was so fun and so comforting and encouraging. After releasing songs through Tangata Records, Hinuahi teamed up with UK producer Jazz Coleman from Killing Joke. Their 1999 collaboration Oceania went double platinum. Then Hinuahi hit the headlines during the Rugby World Cup. I remember us having dinner in London and you said, I need to nip out and do an interview. And then you came back and you said, I've just talked to Paul Holmes, and he says they're all doing the haka over there because I sang in Māori. Yeah. I mean, was that a huge surprise? I had a feeling that there might be some pushback, but I had no idea what it would turn into. I had seen you previously singing the anthem at rugby league things. You were kind of the anthem girl. <laughs> so why would you think there'd be pushback? Well, I guess I did have a sense that not everyone um, embraced Te Reo Māori like we do. And still, there is a sector of our community, a broader community that um, doesn't sort of get down with the real. So when I did it and got the kind of backlash that I did, it was, it was really hurtful. And um, I sort of thought, what does that actually mean for where we're at as a nation? Aotearoa. So uh, yeah, I was kind of devastated and uh, that's because the platforms in those days wasn't social media but it was mm. talkback radio. Yeah. My sense was that you weren't, you know, making a political statement. You were doing what was natural. That's right. I guess um, when I'd done those performances in the past, I'd been singing with someone else and they'd be singing the English and I'd sing the Māori and it would be, you know, a complimentary thing. It was her grandmother, Joan, who first inspired a passion in Hinewehi for te reo. She grew up speaking Māori, going to the native school, thinking she was Māori, and uh, knowing that her, her mother was Pākehā. But then when she was 15, she found out that she was actually Pākehā, and she was kind of shocked. But she spoke Māori and beautifully, and so she met my grandfather, and. Um, 
and had my dad. She had been married at 16, become a mother at 17 and a widow at 19. Oh my goodness. Then she married Joe Mohi, um, would continue to speak the deal to him, but um, because they had such a bad experience at school and, and punished for speaking Māori, they didn't teach their kids to speak Māori. Pihi o whakaroi pāna ki tēnei tohu kahurangi. Tēnō oho rere. E tani koata ku ngā kau i tangi koe. A kā tangi au. <laughs> ko koe te whaia koini i nāi nei. Ai, ai. Hinewehi's greatest achievement is being the best mama to her daughter Hinero Katori. I remember you ringing me up and saying she's born and it didn't go as you expected. No, no, she had a really, really tricky time coming into the world and it was wonderful people like yourself who supported me through a difficult time and it was Jazz Coleman who produced my first album Oceania. He said to me uh, music therapy is what will help Hinerokitori and also you need to use music to express yourself and use it as a cathartic way yeah. of, of bringing out that emotion. We have a, a team working with her 24-7, team of four. It was a, a little tricky during lockdown last year because we were down to a, a pretty skeleton crew and um, we were still working as well as caring for her. So it was pretty tricky. I think the biggest thing that um, we, we can't get a handle on is the seizures and uh, they're always a bit of an unpredictable part of her condition but um, she's, she's such an inspiring person and she completes our whanau. Mm. She is um, a special person in our lives. I think you are just quietly. <laughs> and their special relationship has translated into a powerful legacy. The Hinero Katauri Music Therapy School has centres in Auckland, Whangarei and Hawke's Bay, catering to over 600 children and adults. Whether you're suffering dementia or you um, have been born with a, a Down syndrome or um, some condition that makes life really challenging, music therapy is an amazing way to, to communicate with others and to um, help you to achieve the, the goals of, of interacting with the world. A breast cancer survivor, record and TV producer, advocate for Māori in the music industry, now Henewehi Mohi is a dame. Did you have to think about that? Uh, it, it was just like um, a hot flush. <laughs> it, was, um, it was just all, all the things that, um, that I've experienced and all the aroha that I've experienced from, from everybody to do the things that I do with them um, just, just came in a flurry. And, um, and I have to say, I, I thought of my grandmother first. It's really special to share this reflection of, of the things that I've been doing and, 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 and this award as a, a tohu that you're a part of. Too. You've got, got a bit more gas left in the tank. <laughs> yeah, I have. <laughs> That was the right <laughs> <laughs>